Well, it's time for Radix Sort, a radically different sorting algorithm. Wow, I really didn't think this intro true. Anyways, yes, you are watching episode 8 of Sorting Algorithms Plus Plus, Radix Sort. Hello and welcome back to Sorting Algorithms Plus Plus. So today, we're going to take a look at Radix Sort, one of the more interesting approaches to actually getting data sorted, because in fact, this is the first sorting algorithm that isn't a comparison sort. Now, this algorithm is particularly interesting because it doesn't take on the usual approach to sorting. Very commonly, we'll see sorting algorithms that, you know, do a whole bunch of comparisons and use that to actually get things sorted. However, the approach used by Radix Sort is different. It's going to just group things together and then stick it all back together and then group things together again and stick it back into one list again. And in doing so, things are magically sorted. So really all I can say is this algorithm is rather different. But without any further ado, let us jump right into actually looking at Radix Sort. Really to understand this algorithm, all you have to do is watch it happen. So let's jump right into the traits. Now, notice that unlike all normal, you know, demonstrations in this series and basically any other sorting series I've ever done, today we're going to have to use pretty large numbers. In fact, the reason for that is Radix Sort is pointless if you don't use large numbers because Radix Sort breaks down digits by their individual position. You also notice that I actually have some numbers padded with extra zeros. This is just for convenience. It's just to make things easier for us to see. So let's begin. Now, the first thing we're going to do is to take a look at the rightmost digit of every number in this list. Now, at this point, all we want to do is to actually put together the items that have the same underlying number. What this means is you can actually use buckets in an approach similar to bucket sort. So I'm actually going to do exactly that. And basically, that's it. I'm going to go left to right in the original list and sort of bucket things based on the underlying number. Notice that I'm going from left to right in the original list, and as a result, I'm not breaking the relative positions of items that belong in the same bucket. So alright, now I have everything in the correct bucket. What I'm going to do is, I'm just going to pull everything out again, except now I'm going to do that in the order of the buckets. So I start off with bucket 0, I'm going to take out the items and put it in the list. I'm going to go to bucket 1, I'm going to go to bucket 2, so on and so forth. So essentially what I've done here is I've reassembled the original array with just a few differences here and there in terms of actually grouping based on the underlying digit. So right, that is one pass of Radix sort. So what I'm doing here is I'm erasing all the underlines. Now we're actually going to move on to look at the second digit from the right. We're going to create our buckets and we're going to group everything. Once again, based on the underlying digit, but now the underlying digit is the second digit rinse and repeat. Once everything is in their buckets, we're going to just pull everything out again, stick them back into their original list, and now we can move over to the next radix. Once again, we put in all the underlines, we go from left to right, sort everything into their individual buckets, and then pull them out again. Well, you get the idea. We do the exact same thing for the second last digit. Split everything into buckets based on the fourth radix and reassemble the list. Now we move the underline to the last digit. Once again, we're going to go left to right, group everything into their buckets, and we're going to pull them out. Now, notice what is happening here. The list actually comes out sorted. In fact, we did this without making a single comparison between individual elements in the list. All we did was compare the particular radix we were interested in to use that and put it into a bucket. And that, in fact, is the miracle behind radix sorts. Now, for pretty much all the other sorting algorithms we've looked at so far, not just in this series, but also in sorting algorithms Redux, all those algorithms were actually known as comparison sorts. Of course, the reason is evident, we are comparing individual items to each other. Radix sort is a non-comparative sorting algorithm, in the sense that no comparisons were ever made between, you know, items in a list. In fact, if you want to take a look at how much time this actually requires, you notice that it is in fact less. I'm sure you will of course be able to recognize that we are looking at n items again and again, but how many times precisely? In fact, we're only looking at this as many times as there are digits in the longest number. By this, I'm of course referring to the number of positions in the longest number 
Obviously, every time there is a new position, we have to do an entire pass through the list once more. What this means is the time complexity of a radix sort is O, K, N. Of course, N, like always, refers to the number of items in the list. In this case, K refers to the number of radices there are in the longest number. So now you might be asking me, hey, don't you usually throw away coefficients when you're talking about the big O notation? You see, the problem is, in radix sorts, we don't know how big K can be. Remember that the whole motivation behind the big O notation is we want to keep the fastest growing term. Unfortunately, depending on the size of your digits, sometimes K can be large. What this means is in some cases, radix sort can be quite a lot faster in the sense that when K is small and it's large, this looks like O N. However, sometimes K can get pretty large. And in fact, sometimes radix sort becomes slower than comparison sorts. At any rate, the proper worst case time complexity for radix sort is O K N. Now, the implementation of radix sort I showed you in this video is called the least significant digit radix sort. The reason why it's called that is, of course, because we move from the rightmost digit all the way towards the left. In other words, we started with the least significant digit. It is possible to optimize radix sort slightly by using the most significant digit radix sort. This implementation is conceptually similar to what we've seen, but the difference is we start from the left. This is a somewhat more complicated process since the groupings performed in each pass must be remembered. Subsequent passes of radix sort are performed within the individual groups instead of over the entire array. This approach, while more complicated, allows us to stop the sorting process as soon as none of the buckets have two or more items. As you can see in this particular trace, we do not have to worry about the third and fourth digits at all. Now, as mentioned earlier, this method can actually be used to sort strings of text. Of course, well, your strings have to be short, otherwise you get a very large K. And of course, this will be kind of heavy on the memory use because you're creating 26 buckets from A to Z. If you allow for other things like punctuation or, you know, you differentiate between capital letters and small letters, your number of buckets grows even larger. And well, basically, there you have it. That's all there is for this episode on radix sort. If you have any comments, queries, or suggestions, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. Don't forget to check out the official Twitter account for this channel at twitter.com slash 0612tv. As always, I appreciate every like, favorite, and subscription you give me. But until next time, you're watching 0612tv.